Hey, welcome back to Carter Needs Coffee. I'm Carter. So in my last video, it was more of an intro. I talked about who I am and what my channel is gonna be about. If you haven't seen it, it's only a couple minutes long. You should go check it out. Basically, in short, I built an espresso machine pretty much in my room. So for this next video, I kinda wanted to talk about this machine a little bit more in depth. We'll look at the inside and then we'll look at the outside, and then I'll talk about some of the engineering choices that I made along the way. After that, we'll pull some shots and then we'll have some fun. And then at the end, if there's time, I might introduce you to my cat, or one of them anyway. So just to be clear, let's go over what I'm covering today. I'll be giving more of a broad peek inside the machine so you can get a better idea of what's going on under the hood. I'll be demonstrating the use of the machine, however, this video will definitely have more of a technical focus. I've got other videos in the works that will go over use and design, so stay tuned for those. Today, we'll take a look through the top and back panels at uh, some of the plumbing and electrical work, with most of the focus being on the hydraulics. Towards the second half of the video, I'll show you what it's like to pull shots on this guy, but remember, I've got a whole video dedicated to my barista routine using the Mark I. So, let's take a look at the front. Um, I've got a couple of things going on here. So if you take a look over here, I've got a dual gauge. Now, one side of this gauge shows the pressure of the boiler, right? Now on the other side of the gauge, it shows the pressure at the group head. And I have that hooked up in a very specific way that we'll kind of get into a little bit later. On the right side of the front panel here, I've got a couple of lights and a switch. This switch is just your basic on and off switch. When it's down, it's off. And when it's up, the machine is on. Pretty simple. Now. Let me talk about these lights for a second. This green light at the bottom, that stays on as long as the machine is connected and has power. Not necessarily when it's on, it's when it has power. The top one is a red light and that will blink certain things and certain codes and certain patterns to basically let the user know what's going on. If there's an error, it will blink a certain code. If certain things are working properly, it'll blink a different code. And that's to kind of help diagnose if there is a problem, kind of helping me what's going on there. So that's why I did that one. So if we're gonna look inside, first we have to take the top off. <laughs> or remove the lid, I guess. <laughs> take a look at this. This piece of metal that you see up here, this is actually the cup warmer, and it does a pretty good job, I have to say, but it just uses the residual heat from some of the steam that uh, kicks up from the top, so. Right, I know there's a lot to look at here, but it's pretty simple. Everything that you see inside right here, that big hunk of brass that you see inside, that is the boiler. Now, it's actually two boilers inside of one. That small little hose that you see coming out the top right here, basically what that is, is that is its own separate tube or boiler that is inside the other one so that way they share the same heating element and doesn't draw too much power. This is known as what's called a heat exchange machine and they're very common with home machines or machines that need to be able to keep their power draw down so that way you can use it in a home and don't need an industrial power supply for. Okay, moving on to the back side. I already took the back panel off so you don't have to watch me do that. So kind of took a look at uh, some of the components back here. Uh, here's the boiler again, and you can see the secondary boiler that's going through. We call that the heat exchange boiler because the water enters through some of these tubes down here, and then they go th through that heat exchange boiler and it gets heated by the same heating element that is inside the boiler right here. Wow, that's hot. <laughs> We've got a pump right here. This is a pretty compact pump. You see these a lot in home machines. Um, I may upgrade to something later, but I'll kind of talk about upgrades in maybe a separate video, but this works fine for now. This big black box right here is a solenoid valve, and that's just a valve that opens electronically. And it's all controlled by a computer, so we can kind of take a look at that a little bit later too. So yeah, this is pretty much all the, the hydraulics. Um, I'll kind of walk you through the path that the water takes. So the water enters through the reservoir through this tube, it gets drawn in through this pump right here. From this pump, it gets split between filling the boiler and going in through the heat exchange. Now, when it enters the heat exchange, it goes through this big tube here and it gets almost instantly heated by the water that's already full of the boiler. Now, that goes up the top and goes to the group head. Now, when the group head isn't actually open and not brewing coffee, that same water will go travel back down, cool down, and go back and enter the heat exchange from the bottom again, and that will have a continuous loop. 
It's called a thermal siphon design, and that just keeps everything nice and hot while you're not brewing coffee. So here's some of that same components that you saw from above. Now, the other side, when this splits down here, this solenoid opens up and that allows water to enter through these pipes down here and fill the boiler up and until it touches this probe that we saw from above. So the last thing I wanted to talk about was this electrical box right here. All of the electrical components of this thing gets drawn in through here. So I took the screws out already and you can see this big nest of wires. Now this is basically just an Arduino based board that has a transformer, some relays, and then a solid state relay that controls all of the high voltage stuff. And all of the switches and everything feed into this right here. Now this is the box that is responsible for controlling the machine. It's kind of like the main board or CPU. Here. Now this is some pretty complicated stuff Stuff, and there's a lot to talk about here. So I'm gonna save this one for a separate video. All right, so let's pull a couple shots, yeah? We'll kind of go through here and I'll kind of explain a little bit of my bar process and how we do this. In case you're wondering what grinder this is, this is a Eureka Mignon Facile, and I have to say, I really like it so far. Because this is a heat exchange, the water in the boiler is actually a little bit too hot, and because the group head is going to be heated to that temperature, I need to draw on just a little bit of cold water to cool it down a little bit so that way it doesn't get too hot and burn the coffee in the puck. And as soon as I see the steam go away, that's pretty much a sign that it's, it's ready to go. Where are we? It's about 22 seconds. I could go a little bit finer than that. It's really acidic, but that was at what? 22 seconds or something? It's not quite dialed in, but I can work on that a little bit. That actually just gives me another idea for a video. Maybe I can do a video about me just kind of going through my bar routine and dialing this in so you can see what that's like. As far as the machine goes, it did its job. So everything else is on me at this point. All right, so that's pretty much a basic overview of what's going on under the hood. I'd love to answer any questions that you have, but remember, I'll be making separate videos going more in depth with things like how I source these components and a little bit more on my design philosophy, as well as the future upgrades that I have. Let me know what you think so far. Now, I have somebody that I'd like to introduce you to. Your patience has finally paid off. <laughs> so this is Little Mama. She is a calico. Uh, actually, she, I think she's a mix of a calico slash Russian blue. Yeah, she is very sweet. She's very loving. He will stay by my side the entire process of building this machine. So a lot of people have a shop dog. I have a shop cat. Tell me what you want to see in the next video. Just put it in the comments below. We'll, uh, I'll take a look and take a read. Right? I know. <laughs>